Welcome to Private Pilot Ground Lesson 27, where we're going to be talking about VFR sectionals. And specifically, we're going to be discussing symbols used for navigation. When it comes to VFR navigation, one of the first symbols that comes to mind are these little red flags, and these are called VFR checkpoints. And while these are not mandatory to use, these are man-made features that you can see from the air that are used by ATC as checkpoints to report your position, or they can also be used as navigational aids. For example, take a look at this VFR checkpoint labeled Signal Hill. If I tell air traffic control that I'm at 4,500 directly over Signal Hill, they'll know exactly where I'm at. And they can use these VFR checkpoints as well. For example, Cherokee 5123 Yankee on departure, flight heading 020, cross Signal Hill at 3,500, then cleared on course. 020, cross Signal Hill at 3,500, then cleared on course. Cherokee 5123 Yankee. Next, I want to draw your attention to these yellow shaded areas. According to the Aeronautical Chart User's Guide, these are considered populated areas. But what a lot of people don't realize is this is what the lights look like in these areas at night. And when you're flying VFR at night, these are some great landmarks for identifying your position. Now before I move on to some more important navigational symbols, I want to point out just a couple more things. First is that railroads are often charted on our VFR sectional. Then power lines that are visible from the air are sometimes charted as well. Then you'll also find big highways like this one depicted on the sectional. All three of these landmarks, as well as when they converge, like areas like this, make great visual landmarks for navigation. And landmarks you can see from the air are the key to navigation using pilotage and dead reckoning. And if you're wondering what these are, let's talk about that for a second. Pilotage is navigation that is solely based on identifying landmarks. For example, if I look out my left window and I see these three islands, I know exactly where I'm at. Then, as long as I keep my eye on these converging railroad tracks and power lines, I'll still be able to identify my position. Then for my next landmark, I might use the town of McCabe. Or if you have really good vision, maybe you can spot this microwave from the air. Just kidding, I doubt they're talking about the kitchen appliance. The next type of navigation that we're going to be using is called dead reckoning. And to use dead reckoning, first we identify a landmark. Then, we fly specific heading and airspeed. Then, after a specific amount of time, we should arrive at our next chosen landmark and start the process all over again. And we call these landmarks along a route of flight waypoints. And we're going to really go into detail on this when we start our lessons on navigation. And if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing that so you don't miss out on those lessons. One more tool that might help you in identifying natural landmarks are these color changes on the VFR sectional. These can help you identify valleys, mountains, and all kinds of other terrain in the area where you're flying. And to find the altitude changes of this terrain, be sure to flip over to the back of the VFR sectional where you'll find this chart. Now let's take a look at some of the symbols used for radio navigation. The first of these is the VOR. And VOR stands for Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Range. Now VORs send radio signals all the way around the station in different directions. And these radio signals, also called radials, can be tuned in so you can identify your position from the station. Now the next symbol you won't see too often, and that's a TACAN. And that stands for Tactical Air Navigation, and these are primarily used by the military. And while the science behind them is completely different, the way that pilots use these is almost identical. But the reason I'm telling you about these is because they have something called DME, or Distance Measuring Equipment. Airplanes that have DME on board can get their distance from the station in something called slant range. And this is slightly longer than the actual ground distance from the station. But you don't need to know all the details right now. I just want you to have a basic understanding of what DME is. The next symbol we have is a Vortac. And that's simply a VOR and a TACAN combined. And that means it has the traditional VOR that we can use, but it also means that it has DME in case our airplane has that installed. Now sometimes you'll run across this symbol, and this is a symbol for a VOR DME. And this just lets us know that this is a standard VOR that has DME capability. So just like the Vortac, we can use that VOR and we also have DME if we need it. Now let's take a look at one of these on the VFR sectional. Now as I've mentioned before, if the station's on the field, you'll see this little dot right here instead of the actual symbol. So to figure out what this thing is, we have to look down here at this little box. And as you can see, this one is a VOR DME. Let's zoom in a little bit. On this first line, we have the name of our VOR DME. Then the second line right here, we find our frequency where we can tune that in. And you'll tune that in on your nav aid radios just like you would on your comm radios. And this channel you see here is what you would use to get your DME if you had that installed on your airplane. 
And if you wanted to make sure that you're tuned to the right frequency, you can actually pull up and listen to your NavAid radio for this Morse code identifier. And this particular station uses the letters ISN. And to help you find your bearing from the station, this compass rose is at a 10 mile radius from the station. And as you can see, it's labeled with the different radials so you can plot your position on the chart. The last symbol I have for you today is this little thing that looks like a crop circle. And this is a symbol for an NDB or non-directional beacon. Now these older stations are slowly being phased out, but the way these work is that they send a signal out to your aircraft that always points directly back to the station. And unfortunately, because these are being phased out, you may never get a chance to use one of these little gems for navigation. Hey, thanks again for studying with me today. If you would, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And be sure to check out this video or this playlist to get yourself on the fast track of becoming a pilot. See ya! Aircraft calling. Safe.